getting ready for the Hot Air Jubilee. We welcome in the Balloon Meister, Steve Sitko. Hi, Steve. Hey, Bart. How are you doing? Thanks okay. for having me on the show today. Yeah, great to have you here. So the Balloon Meister is really the, the, the final arbiter, the decider of if and when the balloons can go up. That's correct. Um, fortunately or unfortunately, I am the, um, the balloon meister has the task of uh, checking the weather and working with the safety officer and my weather officer mm -hmm. to make the flights go and no-go decisions. Um, so sometimes I am considered the bad guy, if you will, <laughs> um, but uh, we're not gonna have to worry about that this year. This year we're gonna have great weather. Um, so we're gonna try to get all the flights off that we can um, I, I promise to the uh, people of Jackson that um, there's nothing worse than going to a balloon event as a pilot and uh, sitting there and not getting to fly. We want to fly. Um, we want to get our toys out and show them to the community. So um, I do uh, orchestrate it all, but it's, it's on a team of individuals, not just me. Yeah, the balloon meister uh, has to know what he or she is talking about because uh, you're experienced as well as is typical that's the balloon meister comes from the rank of pilots how long have you been piloting um, i've been a pilot since uh 2012. Mm -hmm. um i've been around ballooning since so oh, i was 10 12 years old um i was hooked out at the jackson airport another local pilot um was cooking free breakfast that day and at the time you, you got me at free so uh, mm -hmm. i had some free breakfast and then i was hooked into uh, ballooning crewing and i crewed all the way up till finally got my license in 2012 so yeah i think the fact that we've had the hot air jubilee for decades here has spawned a lot of uh balloonists just from going to the festival correct yeah um there, i know there's quite a few of us here that have all got our start here in jackson mm -hmm. um you know whether it be when it was originally at the three locations when they did you know the park cascades and then ella sharp and then uh jackson, college yeah jackson college they did the three-day route and then they went out to the airport and, and obviously now we're back to Ella Sharp Park and, and we're thankful that we're there. It's a beautiful setting and Ella Sharp Museum is a great host for the pilots and it, it works out really well. So. so the format this year a little different and I, I think it's uh, I think it's going to be great because you've uh, condensed the hours and days. Yes. Next weekend Trips Auto Shop presents the Hyder Jubilee and it's two days uh, Friday and Saturday. Yep. Yep, for uh, both both days, the events start uh, about four o'clock. Um, on Saturday specifically, we do have a little bit earlier of an opening for the car show to allow those entrants to be on site before four. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, I, I know Jason was in here the other day talking to you about the car show and there's a lot of cool things going on with that car show. Monster trucks, Model Ts. Um, so if you're a car enthusiast or you just like looking at neat vehicles, that's gonna be a great addition hopefully uh, we grow that this year and then um, there's other activities kids kingdom this year um, and, and with that condensed schedule I think it allows people to get to the park get through the activities get ready to watch the balloon launch and uh, then hang around for the balloon glow because the glow is one of the most spectacular things you get up close see the gentle giants if you will lit up as uh, night lanterns but stationary on the ground instead of us just uh, floating away if you will so Yes, uh, very photogenic, great photo op. So let's talk about what is ideal weather. And I think, you know, people that have lived here, uh, we get it. Uh, but, you know, every year there's people that just don't understand how fickle the weather is and uh, very narrow uh, weather conditions. What are they? Yeah, um, so uh, it is very narrow. And, and what I tell people is, is that uh, typically, um, every pilot has their own limits. Let, let's start there, right? It's all about their own pilot decision making, but typically um, six to eight miles an hour on the surface um, is ideal. Anything more than eight, especially um, in the morning time, is, is getting to be borderline not ideal. Um, but six to eight miles an hour on the surface and then the upper winds is what really the people don't understand. And, and it's for my job is, is to keep the pilot safe as they're understand what those upper winds are doing. Um, and, and that's where, because if we're at treetops and we're doing 30 miles an hour, we'll never be able to get slowed down enough to, to get into a landing spot safely. And, and my job is to keep the pilots and the community safe. Um, so uh, we have to look at those upper winds um, and, and there's tons of different neat apps out there that you can look at upper winds if you want. But 
Um, I would say six to eight on the surface is, is the optimum. Um, a little bit slower is okay, but we also don't want to be putting ourselves in positions that we're not really moving and going anywhere either. Even though it looks really cool, the optics to the surface on the ground, um, we want some movement to be able to navigate to landing sites. So, um, but it, it obviously is a whole gamut of not just what the surface winds are, but it's also those winds at altitude. Um, between one, 100 feet and 500 feet is really critical, and then after that, obviously, um, there is some criticality in, in other altitudes too. Yeah, you do want to have someone. I remember years ago, Chad Siegel took me up at the Napoleon Airport. We went straight up and we, we did not move. And two hours later, we came straight down. It was unbelievable. Yep. Are you sure you weren't on a rope? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, there was no rope. It was like, Chad, I want to go home. <laughs> the um, thunderstorms are a possibility when the temperature, when it's you know summer, gets hot, humid, yep. and it looks like we might get some hot weather next week. Yeah, um, thunderstorms are, are a concern. Um, we typically want to be at least 50 miles away from a thunderstorm, whether that is a thunderstorm heading our way or a thunderstorm that has passed us. Um, but what I will tell you is obviously in Michigan, the, the weather changes a lot. We've all lived here, we all understand, right? Uh, today it's beautiful out, but I, I hear like tonight's gonna be 50 degrees. So um, I have, I've have been in situations where a thunderstorm has come through at six, seven o'clock. Um, it's quick moving though, and uh, we still have the opportunity to get um, a nice evening activity off, whether it be the glow or a flight and glow. So um, just watch the weather closely, but still come out and enjoy the festivities. If something were to happen where um, the weather was gonna be bad, we do have announcements on the field to get people clear so they can get back to their vehicles. So still come out and enjoy the activities, even if uh, it does look like maybe the weather would, would spark up a storm. But I promise you next weekend, the weather's gonna be beautiful. Okay, remember you said that. We'll look at the tape next week. Right. What's magical about 6 a.m. and 6 p.m.? So um, within the first two hours of the morning uh, sunrise, the earth hasn't heated up yet and brought the upper winds to the surface. Um, so that's typically when the winds are the calmest throughout the day. Um, so when you first thing in the morning, you get up, it's a little chillier out. Um, the upper winds, as the earth heats, pushes those winds down to the surface. So that's another concern. Sometimes in the mornings, it may be beautiful, four or five miles an hour on the surface. But again, if it's a thousand feet, at, or at a thousand feet, it's 30 miles an hour. As the day goes on, that wind's gonna come and push and mix down into the surface winds, which could also present a hazard. But then the two hours within sunset also allows for those winds to calm. Um, if you notice, if you ever sit outside on your patio, usually the, the winds will start breathe. I call it mother nature's last breath. You'll feel a gust of wind and then it slows down or in a gust of wind and it slows down. That's those higher winds as the earth starts to cool, starting to leave. And, and, and that's why is because we get rid of that thermal activity that creates those unstable atmospheres. How many balloons are you expecting this year? Uh, so this year we have 26. Um, we did have 27. Um, unfortunately, one pilot um, ha had a complication and, and is not gonna be able to make it, but we have 26 beautiful balloons. Um, everything from a Michigan balloon to a seal, um, to uh, round balloons, a normal round balloon. And then uh, we have uh, balloons from all different manufacturers all over the world. So we're pretty excited. Yeah, actually, we have a balloon manufactured right down the road in uh, Dexter, Cameron. And of course, uh, Battle Creek, uh, we typically see a balloon or two from, um, from the, the cereal companies. Yep, yep, Post usually has a balloon. Um, they have Sugar Bear, which is always a crowd favorite. Mm -hmm. um, and then they also have what they call the Post Racer, which is a more slender balloon. It's not as round and bulbous as a normal balloon. Um, and that allows it to uh, gain altitudes quicker to cut through those winds if they were in a competition. So um, definitely. Let's look at the layout. Uh, as you mentioned, we're uh, at Ellis Sharp Park again this year, and it's 4 p.m. to 10 p.m. on Friday and Saturday. Yep. And it's free, everything's free. Everything's free. Um, as you can see there on the layout, you can see that Henry Ford Health and the, and the Eagles have both up stepped up this year to provide free public parking. Um, and, and that's a great addition. But as you come off the free public parking, if, if you uh, look to your right, there'll be the Kids Kingdom, which is always a big favorite for the local community put on by River Tree Church. Um, and then we're also obviously gonna have that car show on Saturday along with the Model T rides, the monster truck, 
Um, and then obviously this year we have 10 to 12 food trucks this year, um, which, is, which is more than last year, which is good. Um, I know we had long lines last year, but this year we uh, have a great variety mm -hmm. of food trucks, uh, a lot of local food trucks, so 10 to 12, um, which is very nice. And then um, we also have uh, some type of knocker ball game or something where you're in an, one of those inflatable balls. That's going to be up on the soccer fields out by the uh, museum. So it's going to be a great time uh, there. And then the museum is open this, this year. I mean, the years past, they haven't had it staffed enough to do it, but they will be open this year along with uh, Hearst of uh, the Planetarium. They're going to have a balloon-themed show this year that you can go in and, and be a part of. Um, so it's going to be very uh, great time. Yeah, they've got a special program where it'll uh, simulate uh, actually a balloon launch and ride in the, in the uh, planetarium. All right, so uh, beautiful weather is promised, so we're, we're going to hold you to it. It's fine. You know, and this summer has been, it's really been a spectacular summer. It has, it has. <laughs> I mean, if you look at the, at the weather the last month, it's been beautiful. Good for boating, right? Good for everything. Good for ballooning. I've done a lot of balloon flights this year. Um, so fingers crossed. Jackson, I'm going to bring you some good weather for next weekend, and we're going to get some balloon flights off. Great. Well, thanks to you, all the volunteers. It's all volunteers, volunteer-run uh, organization, and it takes hundreds, and they'll be working hard to put on a great event. And, of course, great sponsors like Trips Auto Shop and Collision Center. Uh, we've got uh, Heyman Propane and so many others helping, helping to do this. Thanks for coming in today. Thanks, Bart, for having me. You bet. Good to see you. Good seeing you. The uh, Balloon Meister for the Hot Air Jubilee, Steve Sitko. Stay tuned. Coming up next, the Honorable Richard Bernstein, Michigan Supreme Court Justice, is back with us. And